Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure today to introduce an old friend. I'm just curious, who in here has a relationship that's in here today that's over 30 years long? Good, good. Okay, yeah, uh, relatives, I like that. How about 40 years long? How about almost 50 years long? All right, we got a couple. That's great. That is really good. I'm pleased to say I've known Walker Sims from way back when, obviously. Uh, Walker and I met uh, over on North Parkway uh, playing as kids. Uh, we also uh, met again at MUS where he was valedictorian of our class. Uh, he went from MUS off to Princeton. He's a graduate of Princeton. Uh, he had then went to Ole Miss, which uh, all my money went to Ole Miss, all three kids, hotty toddy, and uh, good luck, uh, whatever your name is. But, uh, but, but really, I, I, I can say with absolute certainty that he is a man of the highest quality and brilliance. So with that, please give it up for Walker Sims, our state planning attorney. Uh, most of you probably, I'm going to talk to you today about will contests, and most of you uh, have probably uh, heard of will contests somewhere along the way, um, and you may think that that just involves um, <coughs> the, the uh, ultra wealthy, uh, but that's not accurate. Um, uh, will contests are an, an unfortunate uh, fact of life, and I'm just going to give you a little bit of an overview so y'all can uh, understand a little bit more about them. Uh, basically a will contest is uh, a legal proceeding that is bought, brought when somebody is challenging a will. Uh, they're challenging the validity of that will and they want to have that will sometimes they colloquially refer to it as broken. Um, you're going to break the will. Uh, I, I used to hear that phrase a whole lot um, in Mississippi. Um, <clears throat> and uh, they don't mean they're going to tear the will up, or <laughs> uh, but uh, what they mean is they're going to contest the validity. And there are a number of different ways that you can contest uh, the validity of a will. <laughs> disregard uh, the uh, advertisement down there. I, I found that um, um, and the first one is um, lack of capacity and um, and that means mental capacity but it has a uh, mental capacity has a real particular uh, meaning. Can everybody hear me better now? Um, Mental capacity has a very particular meaning when we're talking about wills, um, and it, it's not what you—it's not what you might think. It's not just that um, uh, you know that somebody's slow, mentally slower than they used to be, um, uh, or uh, may forget things from time to time. Um, I heard a doctor um, I say one time in a trial uh, uh, about um, mental capacity. This is a real trial. This is here in, in Memphis. Uh, they were saying, well, uh, doesn't this person uh, forget things sometimes? And um, the doctor replied, that's a gift of old age. <laughs> so. It, <clears throat> but on the, on the other hand, um, uh, sometimes um, people who seem quite um, uh, able to handle things uh, are really not. And uh, once if and doctors are, are really good if you can get somebody uh, to go. Sometimes, uh, as we know, that our uh, people we care about are not always is. Uh, <clears throat> uh, receptive to go into doctors as they might be. But there are tests that they can give where you can really get a sense of um, their capacity. But I wanted to just let you know because um, I, I really do think that this issue of capacity is uh, one of the things that um, uh, is, is really uh, helpful to understand because you, you may understand um, that uh, there's an issue or that there, there's not one. This is what, this is directly quoting out of a case, and this is, this is what really counts. Um, the law requires that the testator's mind, that's 
the person writing the will. At the time the will is executed, be uh, sufficiently sound to enable uh, him to know and understand the force and consequences of the act of making the will. Um, he must have an in intelligent consciousness of the nature and effect of the act, a knowledge of the property possessed, and an understanding of the disposition to be made. While evidence regarding such uh, as factors such as physical weakness, disease, old age, blunt perception, fa or failing mind and memory is admissible on the issue, it is not conclusive. And the, and, the, <coughs> and the person making the will is not thereby rendered incompetent if her mind is sufficiently sound to, know, to enable him to know and understand what he is doing. And we lawyers boil that down um, and, and make it five, thank you, uh, make it a little more simple uh, by saying, does the person know what property they own? Do they know who their children are? Do they know who their relatives are who they might want to leave things to? And, and that's the basic test, but, that, but as you can see, it, a whole lot of factors go into determining it. And it's not, so, if you've got a question about whether there's an issue about capacity, it's one that you need to have an attorney uh, help you sort out and probably will need a doctor to sort out also. The other big, um, uh, the other big avenue uh, that wills are contested under is something called undue influence. And undue influence takes many forms. Um, it, and it is uh, basically uh, where a person who has a weakened will, for whatever, for whatever reason, uh, it, it can be the, not necessarily that the person is of advanced age, that can be one factor, but it can just be a person that happens to be easily intimidated and a dominant person can take advantage of them uh, and actually substitute uh, what their will would be um, for that person who is making the will. Uh, these, are, these are some of the things that people do um, in terms of trying to um, force uh, their influence on somebody in, in uh, connection in a way that would be considered um, undue influence. <clears throat> and, and the key of undue influence is that you're substitute, the person um, who is doing the undue influence uh, is substituting their will uh, for what the person would normally want. People use fear, they use guilt, they use hype, they use moralism. This is a uh, th and this is something <clears throat> that I ran across in preparing uh, for this lecture, um, and they call it the ideal model. And um, the ideal model, uh, I believe, has a lot of advantages uh, in condensing things that they have found through the years that uh, is a pattern uh, when somebody is trying to uh, unduly influence someone. And first is isolation. That means they cut them off in some way, whether it's physical or mental or by intimidation, from other people. Um, they also uh, foster a dependence uh, on the perpetrator um, and, and they make them dependent for uh, any number of types of things. Uh, then there's the emotional manipulation uh, regarding uh, 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 threatening to leave or threatening uh, some kind of um, uh, uh, tantrum if they don't get what they want. Um, exploitation of vulnerability, that would be uh, a situation in which uh, particularly uh, if the person uh, is uh, weak, uh, that uh, uh, they exploit that uh, and um, uh, make the person feel worse about it. And acquiescence, of course, is the last step where the, person, the other person acquiesces and says, okay, um, I, I give a, 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 I'm going to do what you want me to do. And the last thing is the loss, the loss of something substantial.
So this is a quick review. <laughs> a will may be contested on any of uh, three grounds, improper execution, unsound mind, undue influence. And only persons who inherit under an earlier uh, will or the law of intestacy, intestacy just means uh, one, if there's no will, that uh, how it would be um, distributed. Uh, and, the, and that's basically to uh, your spouse and your children. Uh, improper execution just means there usually have to be two witnesses to a will. Uh, and that would be if somehow the, that witnessing, the witnesses uh, had not properly signed uh, and witnessed the execution of the will. But I'm glad to, um, what I do want to say at the end, and I know I'm right at the end of my time, uh, is that uh, you need um, uh, several things. First, if you've got a question about whether um, uh, somebody uh, is uh, acting improperly, um, I, it's a good thing to involve an attorney and it doesn't cost a whole lot to do that on a preventative uh, type measures um, and when you are uh, thinking about uh, doing a will it is always good not to do a homemade will it's too important to the people that you care about um, it's better than nothing but uh, I think that overall you want to you don't want to just have a homemade will you want to have one that is more likely to hold up if it's contested uh, and I'm free to take any questions, but it looks like we're short on time. And so the questions begin with your next one and one, which should be with this man right here, the smartest guy in the room. Give it up for Walker Sims.